right, here we go, Desiree Smith. For the people that don't know you, that didn't hear the phone interview that we did three years ago, let the people know who you are. Okay, well, my name is Desiree Smith, and I was uh, in an on and off relationship for about three years with Tupac, and, um, you know, I was there for some of the pivoting moments in his life. I met him right before Strictly For My Niggas came out and Poetic Justice. So he was kind of unknown at the time and I got to spend a part of his life and my life with him um, up until maybe a couple months before he passed away. Okay, okay, okay. So with that being said, man, um, let's start it from the beginning, man. Um, how did you meet Tupac? Okay, so um, I had just broken up with a boyfriend. I was feeling down, and my best friend at the time called me and was like, "We want, you know, we're going to the club tonight." And I was like, "I don't really feel like going to the club." You know, she was like, "No, you're not going to sit in this house and be depressed. Get dressed. We're going out." So reluctantly, I went, and it wound up being one of the craziest nights ever at that particular club because. Um, they weren't scheduled to be there, but Big was there, Pac was there, and Bobby Brown was there. They asked them to, I think Funk Flex was a DJ back then. This was a club called The Muse in the Meatpacking District, now as it's called. And um, so we went and Funk Flex asked them to come up on the stage. Bobby Brown and Pac performed, then Big and Pac performed. So my friend was excited because she was a big fan of New Edition and Bobby Brown and she grabbed me by my wrist, dragged me from one side of the stage to the other side of the stage. And as we made our way through that crowd, it was going crazy. They came off and we got caught in like a bum rush of about, I want to say 20 dudes. So you got Big's crew, whoever was with Pac, Bobby Brown. I think he, to be honest, was probably there with a bodyguard and that's it. And um, she never did get to meet Bobby Brown now, but Pac came down and he ran right into me and her. And he heard her say, I guess she was trying to say to Bobby Brown, where are you going without me? And he looked at her and was like, whoa, really? So he grabbed her wrist, he grabbed my wrist and we're facing him we got pushed out of the club like basically backwards but it was so congested that we didn't fall we just you know we're moving slowly backwards um there were some sparks that flew some looks between me and him um i didn't know who he was i did not know the song i just knew he was handsome his eyes were magnetic they were making my knees weak and when we got outside um he let go of her hand and he just zoned in on me and started talking to me. And uh, that was how we first met. He invited me to hang out. If I was doing anything, if I wanted to go have some drinks, smoke, just chill. And um, I took a chance and I, I felt like it felt right. And I was like, you know what? Yeah, but it wasn't just me and him. It was Big, Big had a friend, a female friend with him. He had invited my girlfriend. She declined, of course. And that's when I told you like, you know, he was like, oh, she think her pussy is platinum. And she was like, yup. And he was like, all right, go home and polish your platinum. And uh, he was like, I'm going to go home with this gold one, though. And I was laughing like, oh, my God, he's funny. He's handsome. He's, you know. Uh, um, yeah, I remember that like it was yesterday. So, you know, we went, we hung out, drank, smoked, smoked some good ass weed. <laughs> So how did you and Tupac get back in contact after that night? Because Biggie, he was the one that ended up giving you his number. And yes. Right? For y'all to yep. and all that. This was the pagers date. Uh, back then it was pagers, then two ways. And, um, you know, I lost my pager. And I could have cried because I was so excited and, you know, um, I really wanted to see him again. And I was like, oh my God, I'm probably never gonna see him. He lives in California. You know, he's probably touring, doing all this stuff. I still, Poetic Justice still didn't come out. I think Juice had just came out. So I was kind of like, okay, getting to see who this guy is a little bit. And um, one night, same girlfriend, that was my road dog. Um, we decided we were gonna go to a club in Union Square. 
And as we're walking in the club, Big is there. And I didn't, you know, know who he was. I didn't remember him per se. He remembered me though. And he was like, ain't you the girl that, uh, you know, Tupac, whatever. And he's like, he's like, did you call him? And I'm like, no, no, he asked, has he called you? And I was like, I lost my beeper. So I didn't have his number. He beat me from, you know, his beeper number in my beeper. And uh, I told him, I said, I lost my beeper. I lost contact with him. And he was like, well, he's in New York. And I know he would want to see you. And I was like, really? Okay. So he was like, do not leave this club without talking to me. So me and my girlfriend went party and I'm like, oh shit. I'm thinking like Pac's gonna show up. I I'm not knowing what's going on at the time, but before the end of the night, Big came and got us and was like, I'm gonna take you to him. Now, we were like, all right, you know, now she's like, all right, I'll go with you, you know, cause I'm not gonna let you like leave, you know, whatever. But he was like, I'm gonna take you to his hotel. So we go to the hotel and he was probably sleeping. I don't know what he was doing, but I know Big didn't talk to him that night because he didn't know I was there. And, but it was later, it's four o'clock in the morning already. So whatever, you know, we went to uh, one of the rooms and that's, I think Dave Hollister was there because the next day they did MTV Unplugged. So they're in that room, they, they got a little drinks, they're playing cards, they're talking shit. So, you know, we're like, all right, cool, whatever. You know, Big's there, we're hanging out at a certain, like, it gets to be like six. So, yeah, we probably got there like 4.30-ish. So now it's like 6.30 and there's a knock on the door. And they're like, go get the door. I open the door, that man's mouth fell to the floor like, what? He's like, what are you doing here? Like, you like that? Like, and I'm like, nah, Big was like, nah, bro, huh, to see you. And he was like, oh shit. So, you know, he told me that they was getting ready. They had a taping and that everybody had to, you know, he was coming to wake everybody up, telling them they got to get themselves together so they could go down and, and shoot the, um, I guess, do their press tour and then do MTV. So he told me he would be done. He, you know, he checked with his manager for the itinerary and he said he would be done by a certain time. I can't remember, 25 years ago, of course. And he told me to meet him back at the hotel that night that we would hang, you know, he was going to, actually he told me, come meet him. We're going to go out. So I was like, okay. Ran home, showered, beauty salon, got my hair done, uh, went shopping, picked out an outfit. And I came back at that time. That was the Hemsley Hotel. Um, and I met him there that evening. And when I got to the, his hotel room, I will never forget because one of the girls from SWV was in there and she seemed like she was kind of flirting. But when I walked in that room and he seen me, it was like, all right, well, been real. And he was like, come on, babe, let's go. And um, we ended up, uh, we went to his room for a little while. We smoked, we drank, we was talking, we was kicking it. And he's like, you know, he wanted to run down to the Palladium, which, you know, not too far away. So we got dressed, we are, you know, we went um, to the Palladium that night. I remember, this is kind of like when Wu-Tang first, first came out. So like, I remember there was a couple of them there. I remember Method Man, most of all. And you know, right. so, you know, that was kind of cool. I was a little tipsy, so, but that was a really cool experience to go to the club with him. Cause that wasn't normally, as we progressed, that wasn't something that we normally did. You know, he wasn't the bring a female to the club type of guy. So I, I, I was, you know, that was a nice experience that I got to have with him that night. So where did some of the stuff y'all did? Because you said that he wasn't the type to take you to the club. So where did some of the stuff y'all did for hobbies when Tupac was in New York chilling with you? Well, when he was in New York, he was here specifically for work. So when he did go out, and I think you know the scene back then in New York, it was a little, you know, you, you go out with the homies or he started hanging out with certain people from New York City. So one thing I know, he never brought me around those elements, but we would like get stuff to eat. You know, um, when he was staying at the Royalton, we'd be downstairs, they had a lobby bar, they had a restaurant. Um, one time, like it was flooded with like his family, some people like Syke, his, um, his cousins, 
female cousin Mo, you know, um, I forgot what her brother's name is, but I didn't really, I met him only that one time. Um, so that night we were all in the lobby hanging out, drinking, talking, not smoking, but you know, it was like a vibe down there. And I would say when we went to Atlanta, well, when I visited him in Atlanta or he brought me that we went to the movies, like just regular stuff, you know, 